All trick, no treat. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. The Parker County teenager who murdered his mother and sister pleaded guilty to the crimes and will be sent to prison. Jacob Evans called 911 after the murders and described himself as evil. On October 3rd, 2012, Jake Evans killed his mother and 15-year-old sister inside their home in Aledo, Texas. And the cause? Rob Zombie's Halloween. Not the original Halloween, the remake of Halloween, the 2007. So we're going to be doing two murders that were inspired by the Halloween franchise. Oh, no. Oh, yes. It's- you know, you can get your scares if you get them safely, but it can't turn violent. I don't want it to turn violent. And these, I, I found one case, and then I found another one, and I was yeah, like, whoa. that's a lot. So I was like... We're getting two for the price of zero, I guess. <laughs> no. If your time is it's worth your lucky zero. Day. It's hard because I love horror movies, and obviously we love haunted things and true crime things. But I think there's a particular part of me that my heart hurts the most when it's like this piece of, you know, like art or media or whatever, people take it too far. Like we talked about, you know, the Slender Man killings and all kinds of things uh, that have unfortunate effects to like a piece of entertainment. And I think it's so frustrating to hear about that stuff. Because it's so far from what it was, its original intentions. I mean, music would be the first thing that I think of. Mm -hmm. People that have claimed to have done things because a song told them to do it. And there's a lot of famous court cases, Mm -hmm. uh, suicide solution. Yeah. And of course, video games. Yeah, video games for sure. I mean, classically, Helter Skelter with the Manson murders. Yeah, there's so many things. And again, it's not, it's like, don't stop making these things. But I think it's so frustrating because it speaks to the disconnect between making something and then the effects of it and how dark it can really get. And if everyone was affected by every single movie or song or book, everyone would be doing those things. It'd be overwhelming. So I think it's fair not to place the blame on the art. Yeah, no. That's not what... I want to do. I mean, it's not, it's not no one's fault. It's really the fault of like a system and a lot of converging factors, very complicated and sad factors, I'm sure. The the story of Jake Evans, it's, it's very recent. I, f- I found them both disturbing, but there's just more information that I found on, on this one. The way th- he describes and the way things were happening, he was all in real time. And he seemed to be both compelled to do it. And I'm, assuming somewhat remorseful or had some sense of what he was doing Mm -hmm. that it was wrong but for whatever reason had no control over doing it he had a four-page confession uh, a day after the killings and he said i started watching rob zombies halloween and it was the third time that week that he watched it i think it's fair to say that it wasn't like everything was Hunky Dory, of course, you and know? then watched Halloween, the more recent one, three times, and he's like, you know what? I've changed all my point of views about exactly. everything. My moral compass has completely shifted, and he actually he didn't want people to think it had anything to do with it, so he actually hid the movie because he didn't want to didn't want uh, unfairly to blame this movie or or maybe distract on his purpose. I don't know why, but he, that he was actively thinking that it will, you know, they obviously found out and he yeah. mentioned it, but he also mentioned purposefully throwing it away. Totally. Well, that's, I mean, it just speaks to his uh, level of sanity too. And self-reflection that he was trying to hide that fact from being, you know, a showcased thing in, in why he did this. And again, even the umbrella of this episode that we're doing right now is about the, the movie and the effects of the movie. He also, empathized with Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. His, Michael Myers' lack of empathy. The, the character of Michael Myers is, has evolved and has kind of changed and warped over the years for those fans of the franchise or horror movie fans. But I guess it's fair to say you can make that assumption that he, he lacks empathy. Yeah. And he felt empathy with his lack of empathy. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I, so therefore he's somewhat empathetic so he doesn't really truly lack empathy 
Yeah, it's like he's almost watching himself through like a glass window and being like, oh, that's okay. That's not good for these people, but is disconnected from it. Is that what you mean? I don't know. It's very strange. Mm-hmm. Very. It's a very. Seems like a very aware case. It wasn't a case where he was like, I did this. I had a blackout moment, or I had a yeah. a psychological reaction to something. I, I don't know. I can't really speak to a lot of that. Just based mm-hmm. on the information I'm seeing, it seemed to happen slow enough where it was premeditated and was very lucid in mm-hmm. what was going on. I'm sure there's other factors that. That maybe have been established later on, yeah. As he's, you know, seventeen at the time, kind of a weird time God, for so for young. for anybody who's seventeen or really any age. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, I think it's it's kind of an interesting thing that, he, that his choice of omission and his lucidity and his empathetic viewpoint, all very interesting. And God, yeah, just being seventeen. So that after after he watched the movie, he put it back in the case and threw it in the trash can so that people wouldn't think that it influenced me in any way. He put it back in the case. Yeah, put it right on the top of the trash can pile. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I guess, but people must have, you know, I don't know if people also found it or he just decided when he, you know, wrote his confession that he included it in there, mm-hmm. could have omitted that part. But I guess if he did, maybe wouldn't be talking about this right now, I guess. That. I mean, that's the only. Yeah. Only real difference. While his mother and sister were watching the presidential debate oh, in boy. 2012. Oh, my God. No. So this kind of comes around. Again, yeah. As things do every four years. Yes, they do. And at the, while they were watching that, he was kind of consumed with how he would murder his family. And then he grabbed a kitchen knife, like Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. But then he decided that it would be too painful for them. Like he had the mercy in his mind. He's like, I'm going to get a gun instead because I feel like that would be more direct. Yeah. Less painful. Yeah. It just, it doesn't feel insane at all. It uh, It feels very calculated. And mercy. Yeah. Interesting details here. So he comes out with a gun. His sister sees him. You know, she kind of catches him in per- her peripheral mm-hmm. and he points it at her and thought he was joking. I don't know what their history with guns are or mm-hmm. what, you know, the, and if he's was a jokester or he had like a pretty chill personality, Yeah, but I guess maybe I would think th- the same thing. I don't know. I, I mean, if you're a house that maybe has guns mm-hmm. or, Whatever their relationship with with guns, I would be pretty much freaked out. I yeah. would be like funny prank. I would be don't Mm-mm. don't do that. I this is upsetting. Yeah. And she was like, "Hey, you're freaking me out." And he shot her in the back and then the head. <laughs> and then he goes down and shoots his mom three mm. times. And more on Halloween, he was he was amazed how easily even as a kid michael myers would murder he began plotting on the morning of october 3rd he was like it was pretty much like that i i have to imagine though that can be the first time he thought about murdering his family yeah or at least having some really dark thoughts yeah definitely the murder murders actually got cut short to what his initial plan was he wanted to murder his whole family he wanted to go to his grandparents house extended family too and older sister oh that weren't in the house, but at some point he decided he was just like, uh, I can you know, he couldn't do anymore. So he got this gun from his, his, uh, his grandfather. He mm-hmm. stole it from, he stole a handgun from his grandfather. Mm. I guess he didn't know it was missing or maybe, Something. I maybe you have it, you know, you in a lockbox and you have it away and, and you don't really know that, that I guess, it's missing. But he, he would, he would have to know the whereabouts of that gun though. So that, sure. So guns are being talked about in this family, which again is a comment on, our gun culture and like how dangerous it can be it's in texas and not that mm-hmm. everyone in texas is like gun upset. Toting, of course yeah. not or and there's plenty of responsible gun owners out there that have uh, un, you know that but sure it ta- it, but it <laughs> i mean you know yeah no i mean there's, there's again, people out there that are very responsible but there's enough yes. that are not responsible that and you just don't know the people around you that grandfather could have been the most responsible person ever but his grandson got a hold of this gun who was very troubled and used it. He just spent time walking around the house thinking about how his life would never be the same. 
and how he would not see them again. He was almost thinking like, after this is the point of no return, mm-hmm. and this will be the situation. When they talk about premeditated, mm-hmm. I mean, this is as premeditated yeah, as it gets. There's, definitely. there's really, I'm sure there's an urge factor and an instinct factor, and maybe the next day he would not want to do it. A lot of steps have to happen before this mm-hmm. could happen. And the fact that I assume this is during his confession, he's telling people that he was thinking about how his life would be without these people that he was about to kill. That's a lot. Those are a lot of steps and leaps and, you know, progressions in judgment. And according to all that's interesting, Evans writes that a fear of his own family were becoming the people that I hate drove him to commit the murders. He shot his sister as she exited the room, Mm -hmm. shot his mother who's in the den. And upon hearing noises from his sister who was not dead, he went back, shot her again after telling her that he was sorry. Man, so that's the why. He fears that he they're becoming somebody that he doesn't want them to be. And before he could kill his grandparents and other two sisters, he I think one was been back from college. Mm-hmm. He called 911 on himself mm-hmm. essentially, which shows some sort of empathy. I'm trying to find. I mean, the sorries, the wanting to do it mercifully. It's it's like this split personality. That is it could be very, that. Yeah, it could be very uh, confusing. I don't. I mean, I'm not an expert. And yeah, for sure. Like most people, but I'm sure that, that I mean, there's psychological issues. It's, it's. I don't know if they're checked or unchecked or diagnosed or undiagnosed, but mm-hmm. they were definitely there. Yeah, well, I think a lot of things we profile on this podcast too it's very like they're they plea you know insanity or they have have this like cold-blooded you know relationship to the killing that they do this is not like that at all this feels much softer and again much more complicated in that respect and it was a 20 minute 911 call he described exactly what he did and partially why he said he felt suffocated by them and he had been planning to kill somebody for a while. And I mean, what's the closest? Who, yeah. who, who feels the most safe around you? Yeah, definitely. Who, who's going to be the least on guard is your own family. Yeah. And in 2015, he pled guilty and received 45 years, maybe because he was 17. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, for, I saw one instance where it was 45 years for each, his mother and his sister, but then mm-hmm. a lot of other things I read 45 years in total, and maybe that's mm-hmm. because of his age. Yeah. Um, the, I'm sure there was some remorsefulness in there, but so at age, tw- uh, at age 20, he was sentenced for 45 years. So he mm-hmm. will, I mean, you know, get out in good behavior, maybe. Uh, maybe. So how about another Halloween based murder from the original series? We're going to oh, go back to 1981. Back. We started with the reboot murder and now we're going to go back to the original murder i think that's a good plan on december 7th 1982 richard delmer boyer was a handyman from el monte california Mm -hmm. very close to where we are stabbed francis and eileen harbitz to death with a knife in their fullerton home and how why he was in fullerton from el monte which is like east of pasadena i'd Mm -hmm. say why he was down in fullerton why them not really sure. Not sure. But it's 1982. Uh-huh. And Halloween 2 came out in 1981. Okay. And the name of this case is unofficially The Halloween 2 Murders. So Oof. the movie Halloween 2 is loosely connected and influenced this murder. Mm. But on the plus side, there's like... 11 Halloween movies. Yeah. This, and more coming out. The ratio is pretty good. The ratio saying. is pretty good. Yeah. The murder quotient is low for this series of horror films. He stabbed Francis 24 times and Eileen 19 times. Mm-hmm. So his defense is that he suffered from hallucinations brought on by the movie Halloween 2. The scene where they Michael Myers murder is an elderly couple. Ugh. And for some reason that resonated with him, I guess. Uh He told the jury that he watched the film under the influence of PCP, marijuana, alcohol. And there's a scene of Michael killing an elderly couple. And that was the inspiration. So that was all 
kind of happening at once. I have a feeling the PCP might have done the heavy lifting on yeah. what that did and yeah. also what might have been going on in his mind and to PCP, who he was. It's not – don't fuck around with it. This one seems – if we're comparing it to the other one, seems a little more – premeditated but a little more driven by something a little less personal and a mm-hmm. little more drug induced and you you know trying to money or trying to mm-hmm. attain something and this is the first time that a a hollywood movie mm-hmm. was used as evidence mm. in a case that must have been an interesting trial too to have, to be you know to watch this because you know the first halloween came out in 1978 so mm-hmm. it was re- relatively well known but I think Halloween really started becoming popular as the years went on. And obviously people look back because when, you know, when it first came out, it was relative unknowns in the movie. And, yeah. and it was, you know, it's not like John Carpenter was a necessarily a household name. Yeah. So even then it was relatively a new-ish movie. It was just the mm-hmm. sequel to the first one. And and also just the parallels between the murder and that scene in the movie. I, I'm sure that was pretty compelling. And I get they tried to... I guess in his defense, say, do you see how th- this depicted in the movie could motivate someone like almost like a how to in, mm-hmm. in, in murdering and especially, you know, with the you know, a psycho pharma psychologist also was there to but what, what the effects of mm-hmm. the drugs had plus the movie yeah. is a bad cocktail. Not good. And Not good. Whatever history he may have had. And I think about 1981. I mean, that's also the Wonderland murders in 1981. There's just a lot of crime and the economy's pretty bad. I mean, it's yeah. about every year. But I, when, when I, as soon as I hear like 1981, I'm like, this is, it was Reagan just got into office? Yeah. It's a very strange time in, in America and the world. And I always take a date and I put myself there and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like strange year. Plug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the podcast Strange Year. I was thinking, I was like, do you mean Stranger Things? And I was like, no, that's different. Yeah, huh. yeah no. I mean, early 80s were rough. They were rough. A lot of murdering happening and a lot of unchecked. Honestly, like late 70s into early 80s. It was just a really tough time for America. So the jury, they recognized there were some similarities mm-hmm. to what they saw in this movie, but ultimately they found him guilty. Yeah. Makes sense. Solely guilty for his crimes, and he was sentenced to death. He's still on death row, or mm-hmm. I don't know what the case is. If they it, now he just has a life sentence, I don't know what the death penalty laws are right now. I'm, yeah, I keep, I don't, so I don't want to say what we got enough things to think about right, right now. Right, but he was yeah. he, he was sentenced to death. That doesn't mean you know you, you can be on death row for literally forever. Yeah, definitely. And some of the motivations that he didn't know them, mm-hmm. why he was in Fullerton. Yeah. No idea. I think a motive might have been money in a robbery. Maybe he was down there and then he saw the elderly couple and he made the yeah. connection. Or he's lying. I well, mean, there's how- also that case too. But it sounds like that's a feasible yeah. thing. Of course, an elderly couple, statistically, there might be a lot less pushback. But it's just it's like a- another like wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Like they were outside or like visible to him or he had access to them in some way. Just like. Bad, bad timing. If you, if, I mean, if you're out there, if you know of any other movies that you can think of, movies that motivating they, murders, murders or crime in some way, I'm sure mm-hmm. there's. I mean, I'm sure there's so many out there. Yeah, I feel especially like bank robbery, mm-hmm. bank robberies. There's you know, then there's always some kind of copycat. Totally. This and that, and there's you know always music and and you know culture is. It's reflective. It seeps in in how yeah. we take that culture and, and mm-hmm. you know, what we do with it is, is I guess, up to the individual. Totally. But have a safe Halloween. Have a safe Halloween. Please stay very safe, but spooky. Make sure it's spooky. All right. You B- keep it spooky. Is like your, that's pretty much your Keep it spooky. Re- We're not doing that. That's, don't <laughs> try to get that started. Spooky. Spooky.